Hi, welcome to another Stream Developers tutorial. This video shows you how to build a fully functional TikTok clone using Swift UI. We are going to use the Stream's iOS video SDK, allowing developers to build VoIP experiences like audio room, video calling, and live streaming. So let's follow this step by step tutorial to add a short form video to any Swift UI app to create an experience similar to TikTok. We will begin with a starter Swift UI project. Then I will show you how to install the video SDK. We will create the supporting UIs. Then we will set up the SDK to build a TikTok-like experience. Finally, I will show you additional resources you can use to build video calling, audio room, and live streaming experiences. Before we begin, I want to show you what we will build in this tutorial by running the final project in Xcode. So let's launch Xcode and run the app. Let's run the app in Xcode navigate through it so that you can see what we are going to build in this tutorial we see the video feeds we can swipe to cycle through all the video feeds from the top bar we can tap the plus button to launch the live video on this screen we can record the camera feed none of the other buttons has interactivity basically this is what we are going to build in this video you can find the final project in this github repository Stream Tutorial Projects under the folder iOS Swift UI. Then you look for the TikTok Swift UI folder and download the final project. If you are new to the Streams Video SDK for iOS, go to getstream.io under Products, select Video and Audio. Under SDKs, you choose iOS. Over here, you will find tutorials on video calling, audio rooms, and live streaming as well as UI components and guides. Also, you can sign up for a free stream account by going to the homepage. On the top right, you click Start Coding Free to sign up for your new stream dashboard account. Let's create our Starter Swift UI project by going to File and selecting New, then Project. We will leave the platform as iOS and Application as App and Next. Then we will call it TikTok Clone Swift UI. Under interface, we change it to Swift UI and click Next. Then we save it in a location. The sample application we are going to build in this tutorial requires the use of the user's camera and microphone. So we need to configure microphone and camera usage description in Xcode. Let's look at how to do that. To set privacy for camera and microphone usage, we select the root folder. Then we go to Info. If we move the mouse cursor on any of the key items, you can see there is a plus button. You can click that to add a new privacy. So let's go to the privacy section and select camera usage description. Under the values section, we can type a custom message, but we will leave it to get a default message from the system. Let's click the plus button again and add another privacy for microphone. We will leave the value field as empty as well. The demo app consists of some looping videos. Let's look at how to add them in SwiftUI using AV Kit and AV Foundation. As you saw in the preview of the final project, there were some images and videos. Let's add them to the project. So I'm going to drag a couple of images to the assets library. So these are all the images we need for the project. To bring the video files, I'm going to create another folder here. Let's call this MP4. Then we can drag each of the videos and put it inside the MP4 group. I will bring the first video. On this screen, you make sure you have destination checked and create folder references. Then you also add it to the targets. I will bring the other videos. So if I click through, these are all the videos we have. In this section, we will build a UI similar to that of TikTok. The main interaction style involves flicking through short-form videos to watch them and also tapping on a button to show the live camera feed. Let's add a Swift UI video player to loop the videos. To do that, we are going to create another group. Let's call this Home View. Then we will add a Swift file, First Video View. To be able to add our video player, we will add AV Foundation and also AV Kit. So let's import them here. Then over here, we will define the following two properties. So we have a state variable for the AV player. Then we define the URL of the video file. If I go to the MP4 folder, one dancing 
is found there. That is this file. Then in the body computed property, we can remove the text and add a Z stack. Then we create our video player view. So over here, we scale it to fill the screen. Then we ignore the save area. And when the view appears, we play it automatically. Once the video finishes playing, we loop it. So you can see in the MP4 folder, we have five videos and the code is the same for all. So I will bring the other ones in the home view folder. Now let's add some buttons to like, comment, and share the videos. So I'm going to add another group here and call that reactions view. Then I will add the SwiftUI file to the reactions view. So this is the content that appears on the right side of each video. We have a profile image, like button, comments button, and a share button. The other four videos have similar content. So I will drag them to the same group, reactions view. Let's also add the overlays of the live video view. When we navigate to the live video screen of the app, it shows some overlays. Let's look at how to build them in this section. I'm going to add another group here and call it live video. Then I will bring this content. So we have a V stack containing all these buttons. That is our live video settings view. We also have live video options view. So I will add it here. And that also has this H stack containing all these buttons. Next, we will add a recording button view. So we have a pink circle with this size and also a stroked circle around the pink one. Next, we will add effects button view, then upload button view. So we will overlay all these views on the live video. Next, let's create a tab view for all the videos so that we can swipe to cycle through them. I will bring that file as well and put it in our home view. You can see here we have the first video view. That is the one we added here. Then we have the reaction buttons view under the reactions view group. That is this one. Then we have the second video, the third video, the fourth one, and the fifth. So we can just drag through each one of them. Next, we will create another file for the video feeds. So let's add this in the home view. For that, we add the tab view we just added. That is this one and append all these buttons as two bar items. We get an error here because this file is not present yet. So let's create it. To do that, I'll add another group and call it call setup and create a new Swift file. So that makes the error goes away. So you can now see we have the tab view and also the reaction icons. The tab bar icons are all two bar items positioned in the bottom bar. So we have a two bar item group that contains all these buttons. Then in the top trailing of the two bar, we have the magnifying glass. Let's add our last view before we install the video SDK. For that, we will add following for you view in the home view. So that contains our feeds view. That is this one we added previously and a two bar with this button on the top trailing. That is the live button. Then in the principal section, we have following and for you. This is like a custom segmented control. So the overlay views remain the same. We have now created all the supporting UIs of the app. Let's now fetch and install the video SDK. Then we configure it to build the TikTok like experience. To install the video SDK, I will go to File, Add Package Dependencies, and paste this URL in the search. You can find this link in the description of the video. That fetches the Streams Video SDK for iOS from the official GitHub repository. So let's click Add Package. That will take a while, so let's wait for a moment. The Video SDK for iOS consists of three components. We have Stream Video, which is the core video SDK. It does not contain any UI. So if you want to build a completely custom VoIP experience, audio room and live streaming, you can install only Stream Video. Stream Video Swift UI consists of reusable Swift UI components like an outgoing call screen, incoming call screen, and call controls. If you want to use all these reusable components in your VoIP app, then you need to install Stream Video Swift UI. And Stream Video UI Kit is a UI kit wrapper for the Swift UI components. Since we have a Swift UI app, we can set this to none and add package. 
Now, under package dependencies, you can see we have stream video and stream video WebRTC, which helps to establish real time audio and video calling. Then we have Swift protocol buffer, which provides a mechanism for serializing structured data. Now that we have the video SDK installed, let's look at how to set it up so that we can access a live video from the camera feed on iOS. When you are building an iOS app using the Streams Video SDK, you will need to render both local and remote participant videos, as well as call controls for muting, flipping the camera from the front to back, accepting and rejecting calls. The above is not a requirement for our TikTok clone. We need to show only the live video of the local participant. You can render local and remote participants videos using the video renderer component of the SDK. If you use the video renderer component, you don't get full VoIP calling experience, such as an incoming call screen, outgoing call screen, or call controls. With the video renderer, you render only the local and remote participant videos and nothing else. To learn more, you can check the video renderer section in our documentation. If you want to create a full VoIP calling experience, then you can use the call container. You can find information about it in the documentation as well. I will add all the links in the description of the video. In this section, we will create a live video participant view. So let's add a new file to the project. To use the video renderer view from the SDK to render our participant, we're going to add a new file and call it participant view. Let's add it in the call setup folder. We don't need a Swift UI preview, so I'm going to select a Swift file instead and call it participant view and create. In this file, we are going to make three imports, Swift UI, Stream Video, and Stream Video Swift UI. Next, we will create a struct participants view, which conforms to view. Then we will define the following properties. So we create a call object, our participants. Then we have the property on change track visibility that watches the participants track visibility for changes. Then in the body computed property, we will add a geometry reader. So over here, we check to see if there are some participants. Then we use a scroll view and a lazy V stack to display them. Otherwise, we show a black color. We get an error here because this method make call participant view is not present yet. Let's create it with a view builder. So we make this view with a video call participant view and define all these properties. Then we use the on-chain track visibility method to watch the participants track visibility for changes when the views appear and disappear. Next, let's create a floating participant and display it with the SDK's video renderer. You can think of the floating participant view as the picture-in-picture -picture view when making calls in FaceTime. It consists of a rounded rectangle which can be moved around whilst making calls. In the video SDK, the default size has a width of 120 and a height of 120. But for this TikTok clone use case, we need the entire width and the entire height of the screen. So we change the width to the entire width of the device screen and the height to the entire height of the screen. Then we use the video renderer I explained previously to render the view. We now have the participant view of the app. Let's now look at how to capture the camera feed of an iOS device. So let's go back to the file create join live video we created earlier. Over here, we are going to import Stream Video and Stream Video Swift UI. Then, in the declaration section, we will define all the following call properties. We don't need a preview, so let's remove that. So, first, we define the following properties of a call and create an instance of Stream Video. Then, we define the following properties of the user API key, token, user ID, and call ID. For demonstration purpose, we are going to use a hard-coded token in this tutorial. If you are creating a production VoIP application using Stream, for development and testing, you can sign up for a free Stream account and get an API key and use it along with this token generator service to generate a token for testing. I have the link in the description of the video. So to fill out all these user credentials, you should go to the video calling tutorial on our website. So you go to getstream.io and under product you select video and audio then under sdk you select ios under tutorials you choose video calling i will add the direct link to the description of the video if you scroll down you can see we have these user credentials so in this example we are going to use these credentials let's copy the token and go back to the xcode project so i will replace the token 
and replace the other fields as well. Next, we will add this environment variable that will help us to dismiss the screen when we go to the live video view. Next, let's add our initialization here. Let's remove everything in the parentheses and paste this code here. So in the init method, we create a user with this name, the user ID, and an avatar. Then we initialize the stream video client using the hardcoded API key, the user, and token. Then we initialize a call object with the type default and the call ID. The SDK has different call types like live stream and audio room. You can also define your own call type in your stream dashboard account. Then in the body computed property, let's remove the text and add a navigation view. So here we check to see if the call is created. Then we display the participant's view as well as the floating participant. Next, we have the views we added earlier, like the live video settings view and the effects button view. You can find them in the live video folder. You can see we have the live video settings view and the effects button view. Because we haven't defined this variable yet, so I will put a comment here. We'll come back to that later. Next, we put a spacer and display the upload button view. And whilst the live video view is initiating, we display a standard progress view. You can also simply use a test view. When all the views appear, we create and join a call using the call.join method. The join method also allows real-time transport for audio and video. Next, we have a toolbar consisting of these items, an X mark, which help us to dismiss the screen. So on the top here, you can see we have the environment variable dismiss. So we use it to dismiss the screen. Next, we have a button at the principal section and also the top trailing. Finally, we will add this function for the track visibility of a participant. So this function checks to see if the participant has gone off screen or not. If a participant goes off screen, there is no visibility. So this is basically everything we have for a TikTok clone application. Let's go and run it. We don't need a content view here, so let's delete that and set the entry point of the app. Over here, we will go to the home view and use this file instead, following for you view. In the toolbar, you can see my iPhone is selected. So let's run the app. That will take a while, so let's wait for a moment. The app has launched successfully, so we can cycle through the video feeds by swiping. To launch the live video from the camera feed, we tap the plus button. This is all about building a TikTok-like live video experience. We can go further by adding a recording functionality. Let's look at how to do that in this section. So let's go back to the piece of code we commented. Now I'm going to remove the comments. Then let's define this variable. The video SDK allows you to record the live video screen using the call object and the start recording method. So here we check to see whether the user is recording or not. Then we call the start recording method. Otherwise, we stop the recording using the method stop recording. To learn more about starting and stopping recording, searching recording and recording events, you can check the recording section in the documentation. Here it shows you how to start recording, stop recording, recording events, and also searching your recordings. In the toolbar, you can see my iPhone is selected. So let's run the app. That will take a while, so let's wait for a moment. The app has launched successfully, so we can cycle through the video feeds by swiping. From the tab bar, we can tap the press button to launch the live video. On this screen, we can record the camera feed. None of the other buttons has interactivity. Congratulations for following this step-by-step -step tutorial in building a TikTok-like video experience using the Streams Video SDK for iOS and SwiftUI. This video guided you on adding a short-form video to any iOS or SwiftUI app to build an experience like TikTok. There are more things you can do with the SwiftUI Video SDK. To learn more, I encourage you to check the documentation and Streams website. Thanks for watching this video.